us done is a list of all of those people that match your DNA. Now, usually none of them match it exactly, but it might be off at, depending on how many markers at one, two, three, or four, for example. I'll show you some examples of that. And another thing that you get out of this is a haplogroup that shows your, my, your family's, your Y DNA family, uh, migration over time, over long periods of time. Uh, not much use for genealogy, but interesting to uh, people that are doing population genetics, for example. So this is the uh, 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 Elephant DNA and Genealogy Committee. Grant is here. Uh, that's me, Roddy, you know. Cullen is, is running all of the electronics here. Uh, Rich Cuthy is not here this, this year, uh, but he helped me quite a bit with the autosomal briefing that I'm going to give next. Kelly Hawkins and Jackie Nicholson are elephant genealogists. Uh, we've been meeting uh, pretty much bi-weekly uh, via Zoom. Uh, we we're all over the country, so that really works pretty well. And I would urge you all to look at this uh, family uh, tree uh, elephant group URL. It has four tabs, and the last one, results, uh, gives the results of all of the people that have been tested today. And they look something like this. <laughs> uh, I don't want you to memorize this, but what, what you see, this, this is actually the same chart I used four years ago when I gave this talk. At that time, we had 99 members of the project. We're up to 138 now. So that's a really good thing. Uh, I'm going to show you a piece of it. Well, there are two types of... of uh, charts that are useful. This is the classic chart. And what you see here are the kit numbers, the surname uh, of the person that took the test, I believe that's what this is, the country of, of origin that, that they say they're from, not that the DNA says they're from. And this is the haplogroup. The haplogroup is just a group of uh, people that have, a large group of people that have similar DNA. And you can see that most of the elephants have a haplogroup of RM269. Uh, Cumberland Carlisle. Yeah, yeah. And this, this is also a chart from four years ago, so there actually may be more people that have been tested since then. What, so across the top then, for each of these columns, is a DYS number, a DNA Y segment number. When they do the Y test, what they do is look at a per particular location on the Y chromosome that's designated by the, the numbers across the top. And what happens is that in, in those locations, there's a small group of the DNA molecules. There's, the DA's, DNA is made up of four proteins that are abbreviated A, C, T, and G. So there may be a group that goes A, C, T, A. And that would be repeated for this one, say, 14 times. And then at the next site, there might be another group that's repeated 24 times. So that's what those are. And, and these are called short tandem repeat, this STR. Then the other chart is called the colorized chart. And you see right away that one thing that they show is every place there's a mutation. If there's a, uh, well, uh, that's a mutation compared to the mode. The, the colorized chart also shows the min, max, and mode for each of the uh, short tandem repeat. And you can see these, these three people share a mutation at uh, this particular STR, and this one shares at two mutations over 37 markers. This, this marks 37 markers, so people that go on here either have been tested to 67 markers, most of them, and some to 111 markers, and I think one to 700 markers. So this is what an example of what you get when you get your matches back. So this 
gives the name of a people, and, and I've just blanked it out for privacy reasons. This, this indicates how many um, markers they have been tested to, and this chart is for everybody that's been tested to seven, 67 markers or more. And this shows what's called genetic distance. That means that this person has one mutation compared to me. And this, these three people have two mutations compared to me, the three and et cetera that increases with time, or with plotted on the chart, you know. This is the haplogroup. Uh, uh, and this is the haplogroup. This haplogroup is estimated from the STR testing. Uh, at, the, at the far side, it indicated uh, some icons that you can choose. You can put up a family tree, and we would all, if you do a Y-DNA test, it would, it's important to put up a, your elephant family tree going back in time. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> that, that's what this is. You can leave a note for somebody, and then this last one is called a time predictor. And what it does is it predicts the time to your most recent common ancestor. So at a genetic, for that specific person, at a genetic distance of one, if, if he, he's, that person is related to me, there's a 72% chance that that person is related to me within four generations. That, that's how you read this. So if you go up to two or four, for example, uh, these numbers come down as you go up in, in time, as, as you would expect. And then you can also adjust the number of generations that you look at. So I've, I've done the uh, genetic, can you back that up again for me? One more. I've, I've set the ge genetic distance at one unit and you can see how it increases. So it's, it's not until I get to the third, three generations back that I have over a 50% chance of being related to that person at three generations. At, yeah, three generations. That would be a second cousin. Um, the haplogroup. So haplogroups are people that have that share a similar DNA. I, I used to think that these haplogroup numbers uh, related to a position on the Y DNA chain, but after driving around uh, Scotland uh, yesterday, I, I think these actually refer to Scottish highways. <laughs> you can see uh, this is what it says about our haplogroup. Uh, it's the most dominant lineage in all of Western Europe today, so it's not surprising that, that we share that with a lot of other people, not just our people. And this, these haplogroups can be really broken down. This is what made me think it was the Scottish highways. You take the RM343 that was shown on the map there, you go down to the RM269, then you branch off to the RL223. It sounds like Scottish roads to me. Um, and then these haplogroups really get subdivided. As you can see here, there are 97 sub-haplogroups for this RM269. These, as I said, are not that useful for genealogists, but are used more by population science. This is the same chart I used last uh, year, or four years ago. I, I wanted to figure out a way to, to graphically represent how people are related to each other within the various elephant groups and, and between the groups. So my, my first assumption and the most important one is that people sharing the same mutation are more closely related to each other and to persons not sharing the same mutation. So if, if two people um, differ from the mode by one and they're not, if, and they're at, at a different location, then those people are less related to each other than people who are share the same mutation. And when I did this, I, I said that any change, whether it's a, by one or two or a three or plus or a minus, is a genetic distance of one. But that's not the way I learned since then that uh, 
if you if you are off by two, then that's a genetic distance of two, not, not of one. But as it turns out, just about all of our stuff is at a genetic distance of one, so it really doesn't matter. Yeah. It's a different talk. Uh, so uh, I want to go to the next chart. Yeah. So this is this is what I came up with. This, this is this for the, this is for the Oliphant Davenport group, and at 37 markers, we have 12 people in that group now. Seven of those people have exactly the same, they have no, no mutation compared to the modes of that group. And three of them have the mutation of just one. And then there's a, a group that's closely related, the Nova Scotia elephant, and there are only two people in that group. And the mode is one, two, three, a genetic distance of three from the mode of the elephant, Davenport elephant. Okay. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And and no, that's good. Thank you. Uh, and then I also show this for 67 markers, and you see at 67 markers, we only have, uh, what, eight people, counting the Nova Scotia people. I, I, I'll point out that three of these people, uh, these, these two in this one, were, have been tested to 111 markers, and these two people show no additional mutations at 111 markers. So I presume that they're very, very closely related to each other. These two people were actually on the mode at 37 markers, but at 67 markers, they're off one. And then if we show the Nova Scotia people, we, we see the, the mode is now at a genetic distance of four, where it was three before. And either one of these could be, a, since there's only two of them, either one of them could be on the mode or off the mode by one. They're just all we know is they're one distance apart. We need somebody else to be tested in Nova Scotia to better define the mode. Uh, so this is one way to show the relationship among people, but it's very cumbersome and it takes time to do it. And the more pe people you have, the more time it takes. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I'm leading into the wrong thing. Th this in this chart, what I did uh, was compare each of the larger groups, like the Carlisle Cumberland group to the Duncan Oliphant group, the modes of those two groups differ by 23. And the mode between Carlisle Cumberland and Maryland differs by 24. And I just added up those. And when I look at this, I see that the Olivent have the fewest, um, have the shortest genetic distance to, compared to all the rest of them. I think what this means is that all of the other groups descended from the olive vent. I, I don't know if that goes with what uh, what your genealogy says, Brody, but no, no, that's a different group. That's the way it's spelled on the chart with the B. Okay. Well, no, it's different. It's different from Carlisle. They, they, the, the, okay. 
but more more recently, uh, Brant discovered a tool. I believe it was Brant discovered a tool called the dendrogram that uh, is much more easier easy to much easier to use than what I was doing, and I think it provides more information. So, th according to their website, these are software generated diagrams that convey relationships based on distance measured either in years or generations. And in general, dendrograms constructed from 12 marker and 37 marker data will be dubious, and I would actually say useless, while those built with 111 uh, markers will be quite good. Uh, most of our people have been tested to 67 markers, so that's what I've shown. Uh, this is a, the dendrogram for that elephant Dev Davenport group, and you see, um, these are, these are the two people that were in the mode. They're connected together, meaning they're the same. And those are the two people that are away from the mode. This is a logarithmic scale. And, and these at the top are the two Nova Scotia people. So this is uh, one generation, three generations, and 10 generations back. So what does this show? Uh, each, each of these points, uh, what we're measuring here is the number of generations back to the most recent common ancestor. So the most recent common ancestor for uh, these two guys and this one is, is right here, a little over three generations. Uh, of course, you can't have a fraction for generations going back. It's an integer number, but this is all uh, mathematically uh, calculated, so it's a little over three generations. And by the time you get to the, the uh, common ancestor here for the Rutherford, or for the Oliphant Davenport group and the Nova Scotia group, you have to go back 10 generations. And the two people in the Nova Scotia group are about a little over three generations apart. So this is really the bottom part of it dendrogram that we built for the whole elephant project of those people that have been tested to 67 markers. I think there are 23 men that have been tested to 67 markers. Uh, you see the kit numbers and the groups on the right-hand side. I've just uh, enlarged the groups on this side to make it a little easier to read. And the, the dendrogram software identifies what they call clades. Th th those are uh, people that are, re are related uh, somehow to each other. The big clade is the big one that starts off with the Davin elephant Davenport. And then this is the Duncan elephant clade here. And this is a, another clade that I'm not sure where those people come from. But they're way back in time. Uh, 40 generations back. At 40 generations, you, you have one trillion, one trillion grandparents. That's a lot. Now that doesn't mean that that's, you don't have one trillion different grandparents because there weren't one trillion people around <laughs> a long time ago. There were uh, so so what so so you have different w different ways to get to the same grandparent. Uh, if you've done much genealogy and have gotten back very far, you'll probably run into that in your own genealogy. So th these are the the Maryland Gordies, the Duncan elephants. Uh, Cumberland uh, elephants here, the borders, Glasgow, uh, Kilmars, Nova Scotia, and the Davenport Rufus. So we, we were just, our, the committee's been playing with this and it has been trying to find uh, more information uh, that we can gather from this. And uh, this is very much, very early in our research. So how can you help us with the Y-DNA project? Well, if you're an elephant male and you haven't had your Y-DNA tested, please have it tested. Um, this, this is a, a uh, URL that you can go to to sign up to join the group. I have some handouts, if you didn't get one, that have all of these URLs that are, and, and uh, email numbers, yeah. Yes, yeah. Yeah, if, if, you, if you think you might be 
descended from somebody that does have the elephant, it would be good to test it. But a male, I mean. But but it, yeah, you're Millers, so yeah, it, yeah. So you wouldn't be testing. I, and I'll be talking more about the ancestry test in the next talk. Uh, th this is an idea. I, I, a couple of weeks ago, I looked at the website to see what these tests cost. The 37 marker test is now 119, and the 111 test is 249. We, we'd really like to get everybody tested to at least the 67 markers and hopefully to 111 markers. Well, if you, it, it's always best, better to, get, to have as many tests as possible. So I would say have them tested. But uh, you, there, there's something called a uh, non-fraternity event. When somebody you think is your biological brother is not your biological brother, your biological half-brother, for whatever reason. I mean, everybody thinks infidelity is the reason, but adoption or there's another test tube babies or other reasons why that could happen. Uh, but it's, if, if it, I mean, you would, you would pr prove, certainly prove definitely that they had the same father if you had them both tested. And because they don't look exactly, they, they look like they might have different parents, that doesn't mean anything, really. He was adopted. He's just finding out he was adopted. Yeah. <laughs> the, the test itself is very simple. It's painless. You just take, they send you a swab. You swab your mouth for the inside of your cheek for a minute. You put the swab in a little vial and break it off. You tighten the lid on the vial and you mail it back to them. And once you've do, done that, then you can get multiple tests out of that one sample. I've, I've gotten, I've, uh, I don't I've probably been tested uh, four or five different times all on one sample. Right. That would that would be. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna get the sales. <laughs> they they do have sales very often. They just had one for Father's Day, and you can get thirty or forty bucks off of the of the price. So I would wait for a sale. Um, Yeah, that, that's what this one indicates here. So the other thing, once you get your your um, DNA test and the results are posted to the website, please put up your elephant line going back in time so that we can compare the different elephant lines vis-a-vis -vis -vis the DNA results. So this is a little reading list for you. The first two books are kind of overall, recent overall books on the relation, using DNA for genealogy purposes. I would read a recent book, the old book. So, so, this is a, a fast changing field. So get something that's up to date when you're reading. This has more to do with the population genetics book. I'm actually reading this book now. It, it, it uh, looks at um, how people are related to each other around the world and how, the, how people migrated to North America, for example, uh, Asia. Uh, Bill Griffith wrote a book, The Stranger in My Genes. He found out uh, late in life that his 
his father that he grew up with was not his biological father. And by that time, I think both his biological father and the father he grew up with had passed away, but his mother was still living. So it's about how he reacted to finding out this news and his relationship with his mother. It's a very interesting book, even if you're not interested in genealogy. It's quite an interesting story. So I believe that's all I have for this talk. Uh, any other questions? Uh, 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 thank you. I, I'd be happy to do that. I, I was going to mention that the genealogy committee is not going to do your genealogy, but we, we, we certainly would be willing to give you pointers and help you. Uh, you do it. Yeah, just I think any any of us would be willing to help. Just grab one of us. Uh, you're welcome. Yes. Well, I, when did the Y DNA test? I, I thought. I, I think it was 2007 when I had my first test. That's why I said that. Do you know uh, what company you were tested with? Was it? it would be okay. Okay. Yeah. Right. I I don't remember specifically. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the the clan Owlfin isn't dependent on your DNA. It's dependent on your your surname and your interest in the clan. Well, I, I'm not talking about mitochondrial this week. Uh, it, the mitochondrial line, mitochondrial DNA is not nuclear DNA. It, it, 
you don't have chromosomes like you do in the in the, the 23 pairs of chromosomes that we have in our nucleus. It's outside the nucleus, and it's a very short string. It's like 15,969 base pairs, and it's in, it's in a circle. But you inherit, every, men and women inherit their mitochondrial DNA from their mother, only from their mother. So you can trace your mother's line back. The trouble is your mother's name changes every generation going back. Uh, but so, and and I, I have found, I've gotten nothing useful out of my mitochondrial DNA. I haven't found anybody that shares my mitochondrial DNA. My grandmother, uh, is German, and, I, and so it goes back to Germany, but most of the people that have my mitochondrial DNA are from Scandinavia. So it hasn't been very helpful to me. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you. 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 Thank you.